Now for the life of me, I don't understand why Toyota have continued to put the number plate there. Some first up mods on the 79, mainly electrical. We're gonna run an Anderson plug to the back tow bar. We'll set one up that the fridge can share off it. I'm gonna do the trailer brakes. We've got the Red Arc trailer brake. I'll put the water tank on. We've got the wiring set up uh, already in Conju. Now this here, this is off an old 60 I had, an old four speed, ferry drive 60. Um, and this has been going on all the cruises that I've had. It brings you back to the 80s. Uh, I've got um, a J-Max extension. I'm gonna do that on the low range stick. What else have we got? Big fuse there on the uh, Anderson plug. Then we've got the trailer brakes. Also gonna be fitting a camera, a catch can, and an alarm. And then we've got two spacers. So that'll fix our offset temporarily at the back. These are steel. While we run the GXL wheel, which will be for however long I keep the car. Another thing that's needed for GVM upgrades these days, or TJM's ones anyway, the side indicator needs to be changed. So it's a plug-in job and it sticks to the, to the guard. Uh, it replaces the factory uh, small indicator. So what it does, it actually flashes from behind. So it's an LED indicator. So this is the very first TJM GVM upgrade on the three inch coils on the new system of 2022. So I think it's a governing body called Rover. Now they use this truck's paperwork as their training. So they had to train them all up uh, to learn the new system. So it did take a while, but moving forward, it won't be uh, as long a process as it was for me, uh, because they've all got the system sussed out now and it should just be like it was last year with their GVM upgrades. It shouldn't be any longer than a week or two. Heaps better with a bit more leverage. So when you come down to high four, you've got to pull it up to come back in a low range. So it just gives you that little bit of leverage. Now while it may look like I've gone backwards in time here, I'm only keeping up with what Toyota's giving us. Noise through the uh, gear stick tunnel. This is something we had on an old 60 series. A lot of noise comes up through the tunnel and up through that rubber, the original rubber boot. So this basically covers it. And it's got another bit of rubber here, as well as insulation. Now had I known that Land Cruiser technology interiors would change, we would have had this made up in black or gray many, many years ago. But the interior of that 8160 was brown, so it looked cool in there. So that's it for the two sticks. I've got the extension on the low range one, and then I've got this insulation on the uh, on the gearbox. Look at that, beautiful. The Anderson plug in and working. Simulating the alternator. I've been using Red Arc products for a long, long time. They're very user friendly. Now it's not my most favorite job having my head and arms stuck under a dash, trying to feed wires through a grommet. But nonetheless, a job that really needs doing. The trailer brakes are very important. So for me, it was a no brainer to put the uh, knob in this position. Very easy for me to access if I need to override. I've got to open this up anyway to pick up the power. But um, what's going on there? That's not how you fit a plug. Or is it? Is this the new norm? I like mine flat. Anyway, I'll see if I can modify that to, uh, to be normal while I've got it all undone. Now for the life of me, I don't understand why Toyota have continued to put the number plate there. First thing you're gonna hit, you're about 10 inches off the ground there. So last one, I moved it to a different position and I'm gonna to attempt to do that again. So this is how the spare tire bracket works. That folds down and then the tire comes forward. So I'm kind of limited where I'm gonna put this number plate. That's an insane bracket for a number plate. Check our clearances. So that'll fold down and the wire, just have to be careful. I mean, how often do you get a flat tire anyway? That's perfect. The tray back of a tray, hits the tyre first. Now I've worked out why that tyre protrudes past the tray or just slightly. It's 
because it doesn't have enough room to continue going in. So this tray is obviously fitted 10, 20 mil too low for that tire to go back. Because Shell actually said that looks like it's uh, sticking out a bit more than the last one. So there will be a little bit of plate on that, which is a bit annoying. I also recommend putting a padlock in here. Once you undo this bolt on this side and you undo that, you're taking the tire away. So they can get stolen quite easily. Put a padlock in here, at least they have to cut it. They have to make noise. Now, while it may look vulnerable there, it's way better than where it was here. When you're coming in or out of an obstacle or, or going up out of a riverbed, this here is gonna be what hits if you're not running your tongue. Now, if you're running your tongue, the bottom of that ball will hit first too. So it's quite protected there. shenanigans again sharing the road with the trucks I'm off to see an old mate of mine uh, and he's gonna temporarily hook us up with some stuff that's gonna fix the uh, the wheel track on the 79 temporarily while I own it luckily I'm not using the M5 this morning but it's amazing how many times I do these stealth runs and either the distributor or the M5 or the M2 uh, something's always closed, they're always working on them. Now it feels like yesterday I picked up the new one. Um, what we did then is we ran a negative 50 in the rear. We tried these fancy rims that were sort of like a GXL look-alike that had the neg 50 in the rears. Uh, but I ended up going with steel wheels for the duration of that truck's life. So I learnt in the last 79 you must go into those rear bearings, at least for maintenance, every 20,000 k's. We paid the price, we had bearings collapse. We needed to change basically everything in the back and it was at that point that I'd never wanted to go back in here. That's when I did the Marks transmission handbrake. There was a little bit of wheel slippage there on the front left. Wow. He's done that on purpose. Clear instructions here of the torque setting for these wheel nuts and not to use a rattle gun. Never use a rattle gun on your wheel spacers. That's ample light on that number plate light, so that's worked out well. Now, as far as I'm concerned, that was unnecessary work, a waste of time. I wanted to fit this water tank, but I had to move the number plate first. The other thing I'm annoyed about is having to change that. But luckily I have to get in there to get power to the trailer brakes. A little bit of effort, but look at that. That's where it's supposed to be, out of harm's way. And it's flat. Okay, so we just got to calibrate it, but we've got power. It's doing the right things. It's supposed to flash green-blue uh, if everything's hooked up properly. So it needs to calibrate, apparently 20 pushes of the brake, um, you know, whilst in motion, and it'll calibrate to what it wants to do, and then we can set it to auto or manual. I like it on manual. I like to be able to override and adjust as I'm driving. So lucky I doubled up on the aluminium brackets I need to fit these water tanks when I made up the ones for the Hilux. So that's gonna save me a little bit of time. The tank's fitted. Would not own a ute anymore without a water tank on it somewhere. Saves dragging around jerry cans, even for those short day trips. Someone's likely to get something in their eye or cut their finger. Just always good to have water on board. 
I also had to move that mud flap back so it's on an adjustable rail and this isn't even like traveling much but where it it's come up the driveway so there's a little bit of up travel a bit of down travel not much but the tire was hitting the rubber so again Toyota not accommodating the off-roader my lovely assistant will relocate the car they look like they're going to flex a little bit these springs they look soft they feel soft too hopefully they're not soft when i put load on them when this goes on it or that goes on it been driving that for so long now you just forget how big a beast these things are and throw three inches at them oh, I'm happy I say you forget how big they are it turns like the boat in the Suez Canal yeah because well, it's still got the stock damper on we'll get the better damper that gives us a bit more lock Top end feels nice. 80 Ks is just on 1500 RPM. And that's on the factory wheels. So a bigger tire will drop that even more. But the wheel feels nice. The alignment, suspension, all feels good. Day two and more electrical work. We've got the alarm going in and the reverse camera. Again, because where that tire is, and how it slides out I had to choose to put the camera a little bit to the driver's side so the vision's not the best you still see how to hook up to a trailer but I'm gonna look into maybe a longer neck I'm gonna see if one of my other necks is longer so that way it's sort of out here and then the camera is pointing straight at it we can just sort of see it I'll show you from the inside in a second with the camera as I always do not only can I see what's behind me in reverse but I've got a little override button here, a little switch. So if I'm traveling down the highway and something doesn't feel right on the trailer, on bullet truck or the Jayco, I can just have a quick look at the ball. While I'm not gonna be owning this one for more than, I don't know, nine months, it's still peace of mind to know that there's an alarm on it. If someone wants to take it, they'll have to make a bit of noise. For me, by far the most important mod in this video was the catch can. Having done it with only 105 kilometers on the motor, it's peace of mind that I'm not getting any oil back through the system. A must for me. Any truck I get, catch cans first thing. I, I've never seen a new one of these. I, I just know, look, I, I assume they were all brown underneath. <laughs> <laughs> brown and rusty, like look, my old ones. Th there's shiny silver bits and black bits. And like this. Unreal. We're spacing the back out to make it match the front. Yeah. Yeah. A um, little bit of anti-seize on the studs gives you the same bite, but more, more bite, more tension in the stud for the same torque. And as a bonus, it makes it a bit easier to pull apart too. So you don't need heaps, just a, a tiny bit around the stud there. That looks like an old tin. 20 years. Wow. It's lasted a long time. You don't need much. Maybe I just don't do very much work. So you're using that in the injectors? Yeah, so this, this is actually the high temp one that I brought for the injectors. Nice. That we're doing on the bullet today. And these are the Snake Racing 50mm steel spacers. I think there's a delivery to the wrong address. Look, there's something shiny in my hand. <laughs> this is yeah, this, this is very rare footage. This is um, what me holding a tool, holding the right tool. Oh. I'm not sure how to feel about this. It, there's no there's no busted firmer chisel. There's no claw hammer with the, with the grip off the handle. Is. So it. what do I do here? I've never used one of these before. So go go do your star pattern. Yep. Get them all nearly there. Really, we should set it to, yeah, that's almost a star pattern. You came here to do injectors, didn't you? Okay, click. One, yeah. So they're specified at 160 foot pound. Okay. But yeah, tighter than you think, tighter than you tighter would. Tighter than you, really? I don't think you'd go this tight. Tighter than you would do up a wheel nut. Well, that's how I do my wheel brace. That's, that's my wheel brace normally. And then if it's a little bit tricky, I just use this. So when you were 19, that was probably all right, because you, you had <laughs> massive guns and... Yeah. That's tighter than you think. Yeah. So you go around them all twice. And then again with the anti-seize on all the studs there. And same story, you want to... So that's done. 
I don't like Toyota putting all this goop on me thing. But it looks so shiny. I know, but it's terrible. I, I never knew that the nuts and bolts were a different colour to the frame. This is... <laughs> oh no, how good is it? You're normally used to seeing them flogged. Every time we talk, it's like, just clean it as much as you can before you bring it. And it comes and I, oh. You did see the um, injector rails, right? Yeah, yes, like... yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll talk about that washing up. Yeah. I reckon they've been through the dishwasher a couple uh. of times. <laughs> <laughs> it threw a fault code this morning. Oh, no. The dishwasher <laughs> shell said, what's going on with the dishwasher? <laughs> I had to get the ABD2 reader out. It's a... <laughs> Was it... E excess mud <laughs> I don't know. In, the, in the trap under water and all that mix. It might have been a bit of diesel still stuck in the lines. I told you, you used two soap tablets. It did. It okay, we're four inches wider now. We marry up with the front. In my opinion, it's where it should be after paying Toyota for the vehicle. Not much to ask for. Even the toy ones come the same width. And at least now when I'm driving through the sand, the back wheel is going to follow the front wheel instead of being two inches inside it. I'll get the toolbox off the 106, put it on the 79. Interestingly enough, the trays are exactly the same height. So for putting the bikes on and off, it won't make a difference which one I choose to take to each round of the kids' uh, riding days. Next episode, bad, bad, bad. One word for it, bad. We put Bullet Truck back together. We spent all day, new injectors, new glow plugs, and it did not run. You'll see all that in the upcoming episode. As always, thanks for watching.